at the 27th Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, or COP27, held in 2022. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, warned the world leaders that humanity is on a highway to climate hell with the foot on the accelerator. Humanity has a choice, cooperate or perish. It is either a climate solidarity pact or a collective suicide pact. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. Greenhouse gas emissions keep growing. Global temperatures keep rising. And our planet is fast approaching tipping points that will make climate chaos irreversible. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. Earlier, Prime Minister Narendra Modi pledged at the COP26 UN Climate Conference in Glasgow that India will achieve net zero emissions by 2070. We believe that an ounce of practice is worth more than a ton of preaching. Hum Bharat mein ke fuel mix mein non-fossil fuel ke hissedari bada rahe hai. As a result, India is now a global leader in renewable energy, with third largest production of renewable energy in the world, fourth largest installed wind power capacity, and fifth largest installed solar power capacity. Despite the fact that the nation consists of over 17% of the world population, it only accounts for about 5% of global emissions. Welcome viewers, you're watching this special presentation of Sunset TV, Greening the Planet, where we'll focus on all the sustainable measures that are paving way for our green growth. And today, our focus is on biofuels. And in this edition, we'll show you how Parali is being converted into ethanol or fuel of future. So come along with me on this mesmerizing journey. In the recent decades, Fossil fuels have dominated energy supplies across the world, accounting for as much as 80% of the global energy mix. While this dominance is expected to recede gradually, they will remain relevant in at least a few decades to come. As the world embarks on the journey to address the climate change crisis, there are multiple pathways available for this journey and biofuel is a critical spoke across many of these decarbonization chapters. Till date, given the unique nature of each country's energy demands and energy goals, each country has placed biofuel adoption in accordance with its respective agenda. Hence, the percentage contribution of biofuel in the energy mix of different countries varies from 0% to 10% hinting at the varying degree of interest that different countries have in biofuels. Testament to the varying degree of interest is the penetration of biofuels in the transportation sector. While the adoption of biofuels in transportation has globally increased from 2% to 4%, in the last 10 years, certain countries have seen significant blend rates, which goes to show that adoption has been primarily driven by government policy targets. Biofuel is not only knowledge, but it is a mantra that in the 21st century of India, and not only India, it is going to give a new energy to the whole world. Biofuel, or from the oil of the oil, 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 भारत के गांव से लेकर शहर तक के जीवन को बदलने वाला है बेहतर बनाने वाला बायोफ्यूज कुड हैव अ सिग्निफिकेंट इंपैक्ट इन फाइव की एरियाज 
lowering greenhouse gas emissions as they could result in up to 80% reduction in wheel emissions as compared to their fossil fuel counterparts. Reducing import dependency and thereby boosting energy security. Enabling circularity by employing waste for wealth creation and delivering wider socio-economic benefits. In addition to their energy potential, they also offer downstream applications in the form of bio-based chemicals and polymers. Biofuels are especially critical in decarbonizing long-haul transport sectors such as aviation and maritime. Sustainable aviation fuel blends are already technically compatible with fuel delivery and airport fueling infrastructure. Adoption is currently constrained by high production costs, but long-term trends are encouraging. If we have to do our health, then we will have to do our health. If we have to do our health, then we will have to do our health. All the world will understand this issue. It has been diverted. We will also have to do this issue. के प्रति एकदम प्रोग्रेसिव मोड में काम करना है ताकि हम हमारा और हमारे सोइल का स्वास्थ्य को सुनिश्चित कर सके 1600 रिटेल आउटलेट्स E20 इज अवेलेबल एंड द मूवमेंट फॉरवर्ड इज टू हैव बाय द एंड ऑफ 2025 ऑल पेट्रोल पंप्स इन द कंट्री टू हैव E20 बट आई थिंक एन इवन मोर सिग्निफिकेंट अचीवमेंट ऑफ द leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister is that we've already moved from the hesitancy of 5%, hesitancy of 10%, hesitancy of 20%. Our mindset is already changing and looking beyond 20%. How will that happen? Greater ethanol production. Biofuels have the potential to transform energy access and waste management, which are both critical for developing countries with large populations. They offer vital new avenues of sustainable economic development, heralding job creation, prosperity and improved quality of life. There are estimates that global biofuel-led employment in 2021 stood at 2.4 million, with the bulk of these jobs linked to agriculture supply chain, planting and harvesting and feed stock. Bioenergy remains the biggest employer amongst renewables even among countries with highly mechanized operations, such as the US and the EU. Going forward, bioenergy will continue to be the second largest contributor to employment generation amongst renewables after solar power. So let me take you inside Asia's first, second generation ethanol production unit commissioned by Indian Oil in Panipat with installed capacity of 1 lakh litres per day. On the occasion of World Biofuel Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicated the second generation ethanol plant in Panipat, Haryana to the nation on 10th August 2022. The dedication of the plant is a part of a long series of steps taken by the government over the years to boost the production and usage of biofuels in the country. This is in line with Prime Minister's constant endeavour to transform the energy sector into being more affordable, accessible, efficient and sustainable. The 2G ethanol plant has been built at an estimated cost of over 900 crore rupees by Indian Oil Corporation Limited and is located close to the Panipat refinery. Based on the state-of-art indigenous technology, the project will turn a new chapter in India's waste to wealth endeavours by utilising about 2 lakh tons of rice straw, that is, parali and wooly. Creating an end use for the agri-crop residue would empower farmers and provide an additional income generation opportunity for them. The project provides direct employment to people involved in the plant operation and indirect employment is generated in the supply chain for rice straw cutting, handling and storage. The IOCL's 2G ethanol plant in Panipat will process 2.1 lakh metric tons of dry rice annually, converting it into 3 crore litres of ethanol, a biofuel derived mainly from rice, corn and sugar. Most of this dry rice straw is burned by farmers in Haryana and Punjab as they clear their fields for the next crop harvest. 
farmers used to burn this uh, paralysis for the different uh, crop seasons. Uh, so the IOC has taken a lead to uh, stop those uh, burning of the paralysis to reduce this uh, smog and uh, the pollution, air pollution uh, nearby areas. So that was the uh, basic idea of uh, putting uh, such a plant. Uh, before putting this plant, uh, there was a study was carried out within 25 kilometers uh, how much parali is access, parali which are being burned by the farmers. So that was uh, one study, then another was the 50 years, 50 uh, this kilometers radius of this plant. So how much parali is balanced which are being burned by the farmers. So as per the study it was coming around uh, 2.54 uh, lakh tons of the paralysis which are surplus in these regions. So that's why this plant capacity was decided to take all those paralysis which are basically left out in the field and uh, normally uh, farmers used to burn it. So this uh, official management has decided to put this plant to take all those uh, 2.5 uh, uh, lakh tons of the paralysis for making it uh, uh, one uh, this you know the wealth uh, to create the wealth for uh, all the farmers because otherwise they were th that was uh, the paralysis waste to them so from the parali we can uh, uh, they are getting a money we produce around 10.3 10.4 lakh quintals of uh, molasses and prior to, to 20, uh, 2022 we have been selling the molasses in the market. So this uh, government of India initiative of making ethanol and promoting it uh, for the sugar industry basically allowed us to come to diversify our business from sugar to the ethanol also. And that's why we got into this business and our commercial production started from 22nd December 2021. And we are only three years old uh, unit. Initially, we established the ethanol plant for 100 KLD and uh, within one year, seeing the economy of scale and its uh, promotional aspects being undertaken by the government of India, we expanded our capacity from 100 to 160 KLD. In fact, the Global Biofuel Alliance was launched during India's G20 presidency that focuses on global, sustainable by fuel development. Brazil, India and the United States as leading by fuel producers and consumers will work together during next few months towards development of a global biofuel alliance along with other interested countries. This alliance will be aimed at facilitating cooperation and intensifying the use of sustainable biofuels including in the transportation sector. It will place emphasis on strengthening markets, facilitating global biofuels trade, development of concrete policies, lesson sharing and provision of technical support for national biofuel programs worldwide. It will also emphasize the already implemented best practices and success cases. The Alliance will support worldwide development and deployment of sustainable fuels by offering capacity building exercises across the value chain, technical support for national programs and promoting policy lesson sharing. It will facilitate mobilizing a virtual marketplace to assist industries, countries, ecosystem players and key stakeholders in mapping demand and supply, as well as connecting technology providers to end users. It will also facilitate development, adoption and implementation of internationally recognized standards, codes and sustainability principles, regulations to incentivize biofuels adoption and trade. The Alliance will work in collaboration and will complement the relevant existing regional and international agencies as well as initiatives in the bioenergy, bioeconomy and energy transition fields more broadly. A Green Development Pact for in this leaders communique and that's a very important component. It talks about uh, tripling renewable energy, cutting down on fossil subsidies but it talks about green hydrogen, it talks about biofuel, uh, this partnership on uh, biofuels, Global Biofuel Alliance, it talks about ending plastic, it talks about disaster risk reduction, so many, many components to the Green Development Pact. And this, to my mind, is one of the biggest achievements which this G20 has seen. With the growing pressure to lower carbon emissions worldwide, 
the application of biofuels is believed to be a possible solution to the replacement of oil provided we are able to meet the land requirements to increase the resources to make biofuels economically profitable enabling us to replace the fossil fuel we use today by undercutting the rising oil prices in the near future if biofuels become available for countries to utilize globally it will have a significant impact on the global economy and the environment india's invitation to countries of the global south assumes paramount significance in this respect well viewers that's all i could pack for you in this edition with camera persons jitendra negi raj thakur and camera assistant pradeep kumar i'm kriti mishra signing off for sunset television